Hey everyone, welcome back to the Getting Started series. In this video, we're going to apply some of the principles of automation and build a simple Hello World automation that sends an email. So let's say we have something like a support automation and this automation requires that someone fills out a form and it emails the correct people. Instead of trying to jump in the platform and build that entire process in Roost, we can start with just a form, just an automation that sends an email, test it to make sure it works, and then we can build from there. So let's dive in and build this Hello World automation. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the platform and we're gonna create a form to send a message to an email. So let's go to automations, forms, and I'm gonna click add. Now for the form name, I'm gonna type in hello world form. And then I'm gonna click submit. And this creates a new form for us. So we can see all the different fields that we can use in the form. Now for this particular example, all we need to do is add a text input form. Once it's here, we can click, we can see all of the field options here. Let's change the name to send message. Now the field name here allows us to access this information in our workflow. But if we want this to look a certain way on the form, then we can change the field label. So let's go ahead and change this to send message in plain English. Now, generally speaking, if you want to come back to your forms or your workflows and make sure they're readable, the field description should be something that you fill out to give some additional context. So here we can type something like type in a message to send here. Next, we want to make sure this is required. So we can click this. And finally, to save our form, we can come up to the top and click save and submit. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to create the workflow. So let's jump to automations and workflows. And then we can click create. For the name of this workflow, we're going to add hello world workflow. All right. And if you want to add any tags here, you can add those as well to keep things organized. And then we're going to go ahead and click submit. Now this brings us to the workflow canvas. The workflow canvas, if you haven't seen this yet, includes all of the actions that are available to you on the left, as well as some information up top that we're going to use, including triggers, data aliases, as well as results once we get this workflow running. There's some additional options here as well, like configuring workflow variables, workflow completion handlers, workflow options that are available, display validation errors, test, and publish. All right, so we're gonna start simple. We can add a no op here to start the workflow, and then we can add a send message action as well. Both of these you will be able to find in the core section of the actions, or you can search the actions here as well. I'm going to go ahead and open up core, scroll down, see all of our options here and find no op. Now you'll see here as well, I have starred the no op. And what that means if you favorite an action when you're building automations is you can right click the canvas and your favorite actions will show up immediately. All right. So I'm going to click on no op here to get to the configuration of the action. Just simply click on the action and we'll see everything that we have available here. Now, if you're not familiar with a no op yet, a no op in roost is essentially an action that does nothing. So one of the purposes of a no op is to have the ability to process data or information or set some transitions for or the rest of your workflow. In this case, we don't technically need a no-op to make this automation work, but we're gonna use it as the starting action for our workflow. So we're gonna change the name from core no-op to send message. Okay, and then we'll click that. And then as I said, as a good practice, we can change the description to something like this action starts the workflow. All right, from here, there are some advanced parameters that we could look at. We'll look at those at a later time, but feel free to cluck around and find out. All right, so I'm gonna click back into the canvas here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a core send mail action. This will be what actually sends the email. So I'm gonna come back over here to the left side for core. Again, you can search for this action if you need to. I'm gonna find send mail and I'm gonna drag that to the canvas. So to start, let's rename this. We could do something fun like to email so that the entire workflow says send message to email. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to accept that here. And then we can come down here and change the description as well. So it already says it sends an email. We could make it a little bit more specific if we wanted to just to get into the practice of adding descriptions by adding something like this action sends the email. All right, next we're gonna come down and scroll to the parameters and add some information here to make sure we're sending it to the right place. So let's scroll down here to parameters. You should see that here. We have the sender, recipient, subject, title, and message. So for my purposes, I have no reply at roost.io. So choose a sender. So for recipient, I'm gonna add my own roost email. Next, I'm gonna scroll down to subject. And here I'm gonna put hello world. And finally, I'm gonna come down to title and type in something like this is a test. 
Now this is where things will get interesting. I also need to add a message to this to make sure I'm actually getting the message. If someone fills out the form and adds a message, we wanna make sure that that is the message we get in the email. So to do this, we can use what's called a context variable. A context variable is simply a variable that you can use within the context of your workflow. We have a particular variable from our form that we can use, and that is the send message variable. So we can use CTX to access that information. So for this, yes, I'm up here now, we can open up the editor here, and this is called the Jinja editor. In the Jinja editor, we can start with our curly braces, and then if you do space here, it'll open it up and enclose it for you. And here we can type CTX dot send message. And this will access whatever information was added to the form when it was submitted. So let's go ahead and close this editor and we have everything we need for this action to work. Now what we need to do is connect the dots and then make sure that the form is actually able to kick off the workflow. So let me close this. I'm going to go to the transition here that says on success for send message and drag it to to email. And this will be our basic automation that allows us to send an email. All right, so we need to come to the top, which means I need to come to the bottom and click publish and submit. All right, now if you're coming from the getting started section on our Roost Help site, you may have just come from the document called Relationships on the Platform. One of the common use cases for triggering an automation is a form. In order to set this up in Roost, we need to actually add a trigger to our workflow. So let's do that now. I'm gonna come up to the top here and click add trigger. We're gonna call this hello world trigger. Next, we're gonna click enabled. And for trigger type, we're gonna find the form trigger. Now there are a lot of trigger options here that you can see, some from integration, some from core. We're gonna come down to where it says core and form submission. Now that we have core form submission selected, we need to actually select the form we want to use as a trigger. So we can scroll down to trigger parameters, form, and here we're going to find the hello world form. I'll just move myself up again so that we can see the submit button on the bottom right. So click submit. And next, over here, we can click publish on the workflow and submit. And now, if you scroll up here, you should see a dynamic form URL. And this gives us a direct URL to the form so we can fill it out and actually test it. So I'm gonna click on view direct URLs and then I'm going to click on the URL that it gives me. And sure enough, here it is. We have our form that allows us to send a message. So you can add whatever you want here if you wanna test it out with what's up baby or you could do something simple like hello world and test that out with submit. Now, a good practice for this, if you want to test to make sure your automation ran, is to jump back to your workflow. And at the top menu, you should see view results. So let's click on that. And we can see that our workflow succeeded. So I can open this and I can see all of the information here. But if there are any errors, you should be able to open up per action, see where your automation failed. And from there, you can go ahead and troubleshoot by looking into the details and seeing what information is incorrect or missing. So keep that in mind for the future when you're building more automations. All right, so next I have my Outlook open here and I can see I have a hello world message. So it says it's from no reply at roost.io that I selected. We see this is a test and hello world. So this is your first step towards building automations. Now that you're in the app, feel free to cluck around and figure out what other actions are available to you and maybe try something small. But congratulations if this is your first automation. Keep it up. Thank you so much for joining me for this series and I'll see you in the next one.